Hello there, my name is Ismas and this is uh, lesson one of the fundamentals of compositing in Blender. And what we are trying to achieve with these lessons is uh, to attain a level of control over every aspect of our final renders. Uh, for example, we want to be able to color correct every aspect of our scenes. Uh, for example, if we want to say color correct only the shadows, we want to be able to do that using the Blender compositor. And uh, also look at how to separate different objects in our scenes, for example, using CryptoMat, and maybe even add in other objects that were not originally in our render scenes. We are going to do our compositing mainly in the compositor. I've split it up in different ways so that I can uh, maximize my workspace uh, in a way that is efficient uh, so that I can see, preview the final uh, composition here and also look at uh, my 3D world and uh, as well at uh, the compositing nodes on the left. Uh, I'm just keeping this image here. It's a Cycles render, final render without any compositing. I'm going to be using Eevee uh, because it's much faster. This Cycles render is just a frame of reference uh, to see what we can do. So what we want to do is use this raw render from, from Eevee and try to match it uh, to what you see here. Uh, in, in uh, cycles, uh, try to get the shadows and uh, the overall color uh, to look like uh, cycles. And uh, we're going to do that by means of compositing and separating different objects uh, so that we can color correct them according to what we're trying to get. So let's first examine some of the renal layers and uh, how we're going to be using them. Your default compositor is usually going to look like this. And uh, what I did is just split it up to have my compositor here and then my three viewports and uh, and my uh, rendered view area around here. So uh, you want to have this set to viewer node instead of render results. Our uh, render results will just give you what you see when you hit the render button. Uh, but uh, what we want to do is uh, preview what we see, what we are doing with the node. So we want to switch from render results uh, to viewer node. Now, so to set up the viewer node, all you have to do is go into your our compositor and then use shift a and find output our viewer and uh, this should output what you see here and because we haven't rendered anything that's why we're not seeing anything here so if i do a quick render here just make sure see what my camera is seeing so if i do a quick render here uh, it should uh, appear here in our viewer node and uh, if i add say if you hit F3, you get this side button and we're going to be using that quite a lot so that we, can, we don't have to go through uh, the menu here. So F3 or just Shift A, search and uh, we can search for, let's say a curves node, RGB curves. And uh, if we, we can change the color here and you can see that uh, we see the final results in our viewer node. Remember, you will only be able to see this if you have a viewer node, a viewer output node and uh, you are seeing the results through the viewer node instead of our render results. Our render results will just give you what you see in the compositor. So if I feed this into the compositor, you can see that that will change the render results. But I usually like to just preview everything through the viewer node. So I'll just disable this for, the, for now. You can see. So you can see that uh, they seem to be doing the same thing. Uh, if I go to, if I give this the viewer node, I'll preview what is in nodes. If I give this to the uh, compositor, I'll still get the same thing if I'm switching this to the compositor. Uh, uh, but uh, the difference here is that uh, uh, if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, which you should, uh, because we're going to be using that a lot, you just have to go to edit preferences and then search for node wrangler. And uh, you try to preview these individual uh, outputs using control shift and then click on any of the outputs. You see that uh, it doesn't output uh, to the to the render results. It outputs it to the viewer node. So if I just uh, switch this to the image editor and to the viewer node, you can see that uh, if I want to preview any of these layers, I'll be previewing them through the viewer node instead of the render results. So while this will give you the same result as the viewer node, uh, so if I just uh, if I wanted to preview this, I can just drag this directly into the compositor and I'll be able to preview this. Uh, but uh, the Node Wrangler add-on just uses the viewer node instead of the uh, the compositor. So I uh, would do this just to speed up our workflow. Uh, if I want to preview, say, let's say, if 
So add a color ramp here and uh, see this here. And I want to preview the results of this quickly. I can just use Control Shift and click on the image node and you see that uh, this will output to the viewer node instead of the compositor. So if you have the compositor, you will miss all these results and uh, you miss that speed as well. So, and uh, another shortcut for the node wrangler, if you want to just preview, say you have a lot of inputs here, let's enable all of these, and you just want to preview a specific one, you just move your cursor over that and then use Control Shift and click on that actual node and you'll be able to preview just that. Or if you want to toggle through the entire node, use Control Shift and then click on the node and it should go through the different outputs one by one. But if you just want to click on a specific one, just use Control Shift and then click on the name of the output like that. Again, we we'll just preview that through the viewer, not the compositor. There is also another output viewer. If you go to output, there is this split viewer that will enable you at preview two nodes at a time. So we can preview uh, the image node without any alteration, any color correction. Let me first get, just disable this so that they don't confuse us. Uh, so we'll output two images, one on the left and one on the right. And because we haven't set anything for the second image, we're just seeing uh, the color that we set here. So we can preview the unaltered or uncorrected image uh, versus the image. And uh, you can use these sliders uh, to kind of go between uh, the, the altered and uh, unaltered image. Or you can do a vertical split like that. And uh, again, this splitter node outputs to the viewer node, not the compositor or the render results. If you wanted to compare this to the ambient occlusion, we can do that, uh, but because we haven't rendered the ambient occlusion, we are seeing nothing, so we would have to render this again. You can see now we have the ambient occlusion versus the uh, the colored image. Uh, if you don't see anything in the render result, it's because you haven't fed anything to the compositor. So if you want to see the results, you have to feed that into the compositor. Or we'll just feed this into the compositor to see what we have colored. As I said, we want to attain a level of control for every aspect of our renders and uh, some of those aspects are if you go to your viewer node here you can see uh, the different render passes that we're going to be using to control our images or our final images so you can see we have the combine which is just a combination of all the render passes all together so that's what you usually previewing uh, in the as the render results but we also have the emission we don't have any emission or anything emitting anything here so we, that's why you don't see anything here now we can change but there is the environment and that is what you see uh, in the background here as the environment so if I change this I'll say to something else let's see I had some clouds in the background there so if I wanted to bring them those and see this render pass just uh, gives you uh, what is in what is being output in the world setting we have the ambient occlusion reviewing all of this in uh, in the view area and that's why i'm using ev because it's much faster uh, in terms of previewing things other than cycles so cycles doesn't really give you those uh, render passes in your viewport you would have to first render out the object uh, so that's why i'm switching to ev because it's uh, much much faster so we were previewing uh, shadows so this render pass, I will make it easy for us to control the shadows, uh, make, maybe even blur them to make them a little bit softer or reduce their strength or make them uh, more harsh. And we also have direct diffuse. This is just uh, the lighting information without any color uh, from the textures. Uh, we have diffuse color. This is just the color of all the textures without any light information any light or shadow information and then we also have specular highlights ah, this is just the yeah self-explanatory the specular highlights of your scene and that uh, you can access all of them uh, through your nodes and uh, if you go to the render settings here uh, if you want to use them as your output here I uh, just have to go under viewer layer properties and uh, you will see you will access all these render passes 
here and uh, if you activate any of them you should be able to see them as well here you have to render again to be able to access to see them here because uh, they are not included in the render layers before you activate them here then we have the specular color the specular light volume transmission so if you wanted to mask out just uh, the clouds here let me first show you the combined uh, we have I have these cloud elements uh, if you wanted to just have a mask of those clouds so that you can give them a different color I guess you can use the volume transmission will give you a mask of just the clouds and then volume scattering will just give you uh, the actual color of the clouds then you have the bloom can be very useful if you're trying to create an under a water scene because it gives you that uh, yeah underwater feel uh, so you can use this in combination with uh, other nodes uh, to get uh, that looking how you want it so and then you have the normal map not really sure how this might be useful but I also have access to that in case you need it and uh, finally we have this mist pass uh, that uh, you can add to add some mist over your renders yeah so in the next lesson we'll prepare these all these render passes and render them out into a file uh, that we can use in, in the final output here yeah thank you